Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm the icebreaker, so would you relax for me? <laughs> I'm nervous. If you relax, I can relax. And I am going to talk about uh, my friend's name, is Siri. And everybody has an iPhone, right? And the Siri is an interesting lady that I'm going to talk about our dynamic relationship with her and me. And so, uh, whenever I ask her something, she said, I don't understand. <laughs> and then, I don't know what you're talking about. That's a famous word. So, when she does it, like, oh, her dry, monotone voice, it's making me like, I don't want to talk to her, but sometimes when you drive, you have to talk to her. So, but do you like Siri, everyone? <laughs> and so, my friend suggests me I can change her serious voice to Australian man's accent. I think that will help me a day. And so one day we really broke through this amazing communication barrier. So I asked her, call my husband, expecting her to, I commanded her, so I expect her to call my husband. Rather than calling my husband, she said, who is your husband? I said, okay, she's talking to me bad. So, wow, I didn't want to lose the moment. Sometimes she just disappeared. So I said, okay, I gotta talk to her back. The dawned on me, I put my husband's number under my honey. So I said, call my honey, expecting her to call. And then she paused for a moment and said, is your husband my honey? I said, what? <laughs> So actually, this intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence actually can you know, communicate. But I don't like her dry tone of voice. And we're going to talk about cultural identity here. And there we go. There's a cultural identity that's uh, I can make here. So there we go. And um, how many of you think of you? Uh, I'm American. Can you raise your hand? Okay, that's good. Okay, how many of you are unfairly stereotyped and put it in the box, that's not you, and being understood and being captured in the box that's very uncomfortable? Would you raise your hand? Nobody? Okay, raise your hand. Okay. Many of us experience this unfairly uh, uh, stereotyped in a cultural identity. We all have a wonderful heritage, root, or background as a cultural identity. We're all proud of it, where we're from. And it is defined by uh, race, nationality, and different backgrounds of cultural practice, clothes, food we eat, and the best folk with the practice that make us who we are as cultural background. And I am from South Korea. And these two cultures uh, combine and create a new cultural identity for many immigrants. Okay. And when we are uh, uh, changing our cultural identity, we can become very vulnerable. And sometimes stereotyping can create uh, some pain. So it's like you're putting a wrong cast in the wound. Can, can you picture it like putting a wrong cast in a broken bone? So we have to be sensitive to those who have different uh, backgrounds. So when these two cultures combine and create a new identity, when uh, the research is done for children in America, when they are three and four, and they understand there is a differences. There is, they know there is different race. They know they have um, different ethnicity. And when this becomes six, uh, they know how to accurately sort things out. They can sort the differences. And then when they become seven and eight, they know it doesn't change the race 
and the ethnicity doesn't change. Instead, 9 and 10, they think like adult. Pretty much they're set in their mind how to uh, see differences. And when they're five years old, they know how to stereotype according to uh, psychology today. So at five years old, children understand there's a difference. They know how to categorize people. So where I'm from, the question. I came to America 1985 when I was 23. I was married when I was 22, 1984. When I was in Korea, nobody asked me where you're from because we all came from the same uh, background, we came from the same background. So when, when I came here, everybody asked me where you're from. And when they asked me, they were very uh, interested about me, they wanted to know about me, and especially the military uh, who served in Korea, when they asked me where you're from, because they were like, excited to talk about this, their experience in Korea. And they said they're from Ulsan, they're from du uh, Busan, and they're from Tucson. Actually, Tucson is not Korea, but they're from like a, a lot of sons there. And they talk about their military experiences, and they're like, their food, how nice Korean people are, and I just like, Yes, I'm from this South Korea, and excitedly have a conversation. And but I'm finding out more difference on my children. Second generation, there's a lot of immigrant in first generation, and there's second generation. When they become second generations, they're born in an American hospital. The oldest is American. They think they 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 believe they're American. So when they are asked where you're from. Their reaction is, what do you mean? I'm from here. <laughs> and uh, according to my children, they said two cultural, two different cultural classes when they, the question was asked. And they feel immediately alienated from the people who are here. So the question was differently affecting. This is the Chinese language for me too. That Chinese, this is Korean. Beautiful nation, that's what it means. Beautiful nation. When I was in Korea, uh, we viewed Americans as beautiful people. There, we filtered through uh, the missionaries who built our nation from the ashes of the Korean War. And we filtered through this missionary, uh, review them. So, uh, they build the school, they educate us, they build the hospitals. And our view is so beautiful that many people wanted to come to America. Their um, dream to come here. And so because of it, we expect to be accepted, the first generation, loved, and respected and welcomed. That's what we expect. And I was loved, I was accepted, and I was able to be educated, and I, I was loved by so many people in America, but not all the people experience that. This is a statistic. And every single year, two million girls born in America, and two million boys born in America, and then one million is terminated by abortion, and then one million immigrants come every year. Under 18, in our time, under 18, 25% has mixed race under 18. So that's how much the number is growing and how we are going to handle this cultural identity issue is on us. It's up to us. Going back to stereotyping, when we stereotype, we can stigmatize that we discredit discredit them. And then we can lose gifted, beautiful, talented people. We can overlook them, and we can just put them in the box. They cannot get out. So, now our America is becoming more diverse, different religion, different ethnicity, it's different nationality. America is known a people of love, 
and respect and generous. That's who we are. That's our American cultural identity. And we don't want to lose our beautiful cultural identity. So in Korean, I'm going to speak Korean here. 어떻게 하면 미국이 다시 아름다워질 수 있을까? How can we make America beautiful again? Thank you.